Here's a story from Grandpa for my three favorite little girls, Emma, Ayla, and Audrey. I live in a city that's in the Sonoran Desert of Arizona. When I was a kid, cartoons and movies always showed deserts as large stretches of hot, parched, empty sand with nothing alive or growing. That's what I was expecting when I moved to Arizona, but I soon found that the Sonoran Desert is not at all like that. It's true that there are not a lot of tall trees like the maples and oaks and elms I grew up with in Iowa, and it's certainly very, very hot here in the summer, so hot that Dickens and Dory can burn their paws walking down the sidewalk if we aren't careful, so we have to take our walks at night after the sun goes down. But the desert here is full of plants, animals, birds, and insects. It really is quite alive. I was pleased to find a book from the Cat in the Hat Learning Library that tells about deserts, and I thought it would be fun to read to you. Here's the story. Why, oh why, are deserts so dry? Written by Tish Rabe and illustrated by Aristides Ruiz and Joe Matthew. I'm the cat in the hat, and today is the day that we're off to see deserts. Let's leave right away. You may think that deserts are empty and bare, but you'll be surprised by the things we'll find there. Insects and lizards and flowers and snow. Want to see for yourself? Buckle up and let's go. Why are deserts dry? I'll be glad to explain. There are very few clouds above them to bring rain. Without clouds, there is nothing to block the sun's light or to hold the heat in so it gets cold at night. The air is so dry, any rain deserts get dries up right away so they do not stay wet. Without water, surviving in deserts is rough. Plants, insects, and animals need to be tough. All living things need to have water, so how do they live where it's dry? I will show you right now. Desert plants must find water. Some have ways to store it. Roots spread out to find it or reach deep down for it. Shallow roots for this cactus pull water through them. The cactus then stores it inside of its stem. There's a tree in the desert that's called a mesquite. Its roots reach for water down 40 feet. The Sonoran Desert, which is where I live, is where we will find a very big cactus that's one of a kind. It's called the saguaro, and I have been told it can grow to be over 200 years old. A cactus, you see, has deep pleats in its skin, but they will expand when the water flows in. It soaks up the water and then quickly swells like a sponge it stores water in some of its cells. Sharp spines protect it. Just how do they do it? They make sure some animals won't try to chew it. I wouldn't want to try to eat a saguaro cactus, that's for sure. This Gila woodpecker knows very well that a cactus will serve as a perfect hotel. She pecks a small hole and then slips inside. It's cool and it gives her a safe place to hide. When she's ready to leave, well, I have little doubt someone else will move in after she has moved out. How do insects get water? What some of them do is get water that's inside the plants that they chew. These desert insects are honeypot ants. All year long, they collect the sweet nectar from plants, then store it inside them, and then they can feed it to ants who are hungry whenever they need it. The Namib Desert gets rain rarely, and yet fog comes from the sea and makes everything wet. Here, the fog-basking beetle has a way to survive, getting water it needs to help it stay alive. It tilts its abdomen up. Water droplets soon slide down its body and into its mouth open wide. Animals differ in the food that they eat and the ways they keep cool in the dry desert heat. In the daytime, small animals stay underground. Later on, when it's cooler, they move above ground. This cute fennec fox's furry soled feet help him walk on hot sand his big ears let out heat. Kangaroos lick their arms to help cool off their skin, then each digs a hole in the ground and climbs in. We ask this lizard how he spends his days. Each morning he's warmed by the sun's gentle rays. By midday it's hotter and it's time to hide. He slips into his burrow and goes deep inside. In the late afternoon he is back in the sun. It is not as hot now and the day is almost done. Then he's back in his burrow to sleep through the night. He'll be up with the sun just as soon as it's light. 
Hawks, eagles, and vultures fly high in the air. They stay off the ground. It's much cooler up there. Kangaroo rat never drinks, but she eats lots of seeds. The water inside them is all that she needs. Road runners can fly, but they usually run. They catch lizards and snakes in the hot desert sun. I've seen road runners around my house. The Sahara Desert, which covers most of northern Africa, geographers say is almost as big as the whole USA. Here the crowned sand grouse flies high in the sky, miles and miles to find water, and I'll tell you why. His babies are thirsty and waiting for him, so when he finds water, he quickly flies in. He soaks his feathers until they are wet. This water is all that his babies will get. They drink from his feathers, which soon dry, and then he must take to the sky to find water again. Out here in the desert, when winds start to blow, there are few plants to help hold the sand down, and so the wind blows the sand, which forms into dunes. It makes shapes in the sand like these crescent moons. What's this nomad wearing? It's called a burnoose. It protects them from sun, and it's long and it's loose. People called nomads spend their whole lives here. They move place to place and keep moving all year. In the Mojave Desert, which is on the other side of Arizona and also California, Nevada, and Utah, plants bloom, grow, and die, but they leave seeds behind in the ground, and that's why when it rains, these seeds burst into flowers so bright there's a rainbow of colors, a beautiful sight. They will not live long, but before it is over, there are lilies, primroses, sunflowers, owl clover. Some flowers stay open for only one day. Hummingbirds drink their nectar and then fly away. In the shimmering heat of the sun's burning glare, you might think you see something that's not really there. This is called a mirage. It's a bit like a dream. Things you think you are seeing are not what they seem. When you get a bit closer, things fade out of sight. They were not there at all. It's a trick of the light. In a dry, dusty desert, if you suddenly see something green up ahead, like some plants or a tree, this is called an oasis. Where these plants are growing, somewhere in the ground there is water that's flowing. Some deserts are hot in the sun's burning light, but the temperature falls and it gets cold at night. Then the world comes alive with owls, foxes, and bats, coyote and rabbits, mice, deer, and rats. Nocturnal animals come out, and soon they search to find food by the light of the moon. Before the sun rises, they all disappear. You would think all the animals never were here. Not all deserts are hot. The next place we'll go is the Gobi, which is in China, and here we will find ice and snow. This Bactrian camel is happy to meet you. Some camels have one hump, Bactrians have two. If he goes a long time without eating or drinking, the humps on his back start steadily shrinking. They're not filled with water, but instead contain fat. Where he can't eat and drink, he keeps going on that. I filled up my bathtub and filled up my sink. That's about at one time what a camel can drink. He can drink 30 gallons of water, and then he can go a whole week before he drinks again. Antarctica, which is way down at the bottom of the world, is the largest desert of all. The air is so cold here that rain does not fall. This desert is covered with ice and with snow. The ice never melts here and freezing winds blow. It is dark in the winter and cold through the year. Though scientists visit, no people live here. Penguins have a way to survive in the cold weather. They get close to each other and huddle together. Today you've seen things that few people will see, and I am so happy you saw them with me. A desert, it's true, is a harsh habitat, but I hope you've discovered it's much more than that. No day in a desert is ever the same, and once you've been there, you are glad that you came. At the end of the book, we have a glossary, which is a list of words that you may not have known and their definitions. So we have definitions for words like abdomen, Bernoose, burrow, cell, differ, geologist, glare, habitat, mirage, nocturnal, oasis, and shimmering. I also have a list of other books that you might want to read if you're really interested in deserts and want to learn more. 
And that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed learning about deserts. They really are interesting places, especially if, like me, you grew up someplace else. One of the nice things about living in a city in the Sonoran Desert is that in March of every year, wildflowers burst into bloom all over the place. Yards that are mostly rocks, sand, cactus, and low bushes the rest of the year suddenly fill up with flowers. I'm showing you two photos here from my neighbor's yards. On the left are African daisies, also called Cape marigolds, and on the right are California poppies. They don't last very long as they wither away when it starts to get really hot, but they sure are pretty when they're here. Always remember that Grandpa loves you, even in the hot, dry desert, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.